What makes Relativity different from other studios around town? You know, Relativity is obviously where the, or I'd say probably the newest studio. We put out close to as many movies as the major studios, but we do it with about 200 people versus um, about you know seven to eight thousand. We also have a, uh, a very different um, financial discipline. It's kind of approach film like real estate as opposed to um, kind of venture capital. I think the major studios models are you know they have a lot of franchises um, or maybe not a lot of franchises, but they have franchises which make um, a lot of money and, and kind of make up for a whole slate. You're talking about how the movies are treated like real estate. Um, is there a film we can look at as an example to say that to show a film where you're taking it into TV too? So Limitless is actually a great example. So Limitless is a movie we made for just around $30 million. We, our foreign partnerships covered close to that amount. Um, we, um, it actually goes probably back to your first question a little bit too. Um, unlike traditional studios, we don't have huge real estate um, where we have back lots and you know, our own lighting studios and our own sound studios that we actually um, have to utilize. So we actually find the most conducive environment for the movie that also has the best tax advantage. So on Limitless, um, we shot the movie in New Jersey where we ended up getting a very significant tax credit of a couple million dollars. Um, so when we hit the US, um, we had already kind of covered our, our budget. And that's um, kind of like real estate. So when you build a building, you pick your area, um, you, you create your, your budget, you build the building, and then you find your anchor tenant, and you get a bit, hopefully get a big anchor tenant you know, in a commercial building. And that should cover your risk. So Limitless, um, had it only done you know, 30 million in the box office, would have ended up breaking even making a dollar. Um, and that would have been our, you know, kind of, the rest of the world was our anchor tenant. Um, so you end up having a movie that you know, generates probably over $100 million um, and, 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 and uh, pro well, in, in revenue, and then minus your expenses on the movie, which we've already covered our budget. Then, in terms of layering the real estate, now we've made the real estate more valuable. So now, kind of, your first tenant's lease is up, so to speak, and it was a great you know, anchor tenant, and now that's prime space. In Limitless's case, now it's worth more. Now we take it over to television, and um, we create a television show off of the IP, um, and we kind of um, uh, sell it, so to speak, or create the financing around it um, with third parties, and sell the uh, TV real estate for a premium price that generates probably tens of millions of dollars in additional revenue, if not more. And then hopefully that makes the real estate more valuable and we'll go back and do another movie and so on and so forth. So finally, let's talk about China. You're mm -hmm. very bullish on China. You're making some big bets in China. Um, explain sort of why you think China is so promising and what you're doing there. I actually started in China. Some people think it's only, you know, a year or two years old. Uh, my, I, we shot a, a movie in China in 2006, I think, called a Forbidden King, The Forbidden Kingdom, mm -hmm. which is the first time Jackie Chan and Jet Li were in a movie together. And we, we produced it and fully financed it. And, um, put it through our kind of current model, and um, it was 100% shot in China. At the time, China only had 2,000 movie theaters, mm. and, um, uh, and yet we were able to sell the rights to uh, um, after production to a group called the YE Brothers, um, and it became one of their most successful China releases. And they since have IPO'd for over a billion dollars in China and grown to be distributors. Between that time and today, it's gone from 2,000 screens, and I've spent a lot of time visiting there um, and building a partnership, um, to over 12,000 screens, which is like the fat, both one of the fastest growing, if not the fastest growing industry in China, but certainly the fastest growing film market in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, the market went from probably a billion and a half, $2 billion in box office to probably close to $20 billion in box office. There's, there's somewhere between three and five movie theaters per day opened in China right now. Wow. We made a partnership with um, a group called IDG Excel, and um, they had started a distribution company in China, also taking advantage of the growth to distribute movies on the ground in China. And it's very difficult to get a, um, a government-issued distribution license. Mm -hmm. So the way that China works, um, there's a kind of board called SARF, the State Administration, mm -hmm for uh, radio, film, and television. And anything content, film, television, radio, internet, actually is regulated by that board. Um, they watch everything and see everything before it can be publicly consumed. There's only two distribution companies that government um, run, and I think it was about two years ago, maybe a little bit more, we partnered up um, as co-owners of Skyland since have be be become majority owners. Now we've built out a partnership with one of those two, or I should say strategic alliance, um, with one of those two um, government-owned companies called Washa. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, the objective is to distribute um, almost all of our movies in China. 
And then also we've moved forward with co-production. So we shot this movie 21 and over, partially in China. Um, we'll do a day and date release there. And um, just by our numbers, I think by the end of 2015, the China box office and profitability will probably equal to or outweigh the US box office. 